it's good grief. I started talking and didn't have the microphone off mute. <laughs> okay. You should be hearing me. Could you just give me an audio check real quick on uh, Twitter? Just to let me know you can hear me. Everything five by five. Awesome. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> I have a timer set for today because I have an appointment I have to keep. So one o'clock today will be the end of this, if not sooner. So I know sometimes I say that and I tend to go on and on and on. But I kind of like want to talk a little bit about what we've done thus far and what next week will be like Monday and tomorrow Friday trading. I'm going to take those days away from the charts. I want to relax and rest and let myself unwind. I've been going a lot since the beginning of the year and between all of you and my older students, there's been a lot of things that I've been micromanaging on top of everything else. So I kind of like want to just chill out and relax. So this will be like a really long weekend for me. I promise I shouldn't lose my touch, you know, with a few days off like that, but you know, taking a couple months off and then going right into live streams and and you know, that's uh that's a little bit too much to take on without at least being in the market every single day, keep my finger on the pulse, and you all have experienced that with me. So by far and large, I think you know, anyone that's been really paying attention. There's something that I'm providing that at least looks a lot different from everything else, okay? And I think that it's not a stretch to say it's pretty consistent and accurate, and there's a lot of elements that are precision-oriented. Now, if you're new or if you've been following along since last year, it still might be feeling like it's out of your reach. And that's normal. That's absolutely normal. Because you are now just warming up to seeing what these concepts can do. And the various approaches that the market presents, the opportunities to use them. So I try, and hopefully you can appreciate this. I try to present the the commentary in a way that it allows you to find your own model in it. I'm telling you what I'm basing the, the turning points in real time before it happens, what levels should be key, but don't lose sight of everything that's available in your chart. Like if you see something that might be a breaker or optimal trade entry or, or something else, some other PD array, you should not be, Avoiding that because you're really going to be able to learn quicker. Not that I'm trying to rush anyone through it, but you'll learn better to trust your own analysis versus the thing I may or may not be referring to at the time. And I may be referring to it subconsciously looking at the chart, but because I'm doing something on such a small little time frame to provide proof that you can read the tape, it may not make its way into the comment. Whereas on the video, obviously, I'll have more opportunity to present those things. But I, I want to try to teach myself, which is really what I was doing this entire month, is to focus on the things that I, I would want to talk about and leave everything else out, like the ranting and the, and the, you know, the, the storytelling about experiences. And this is what I did over here. And this is what happened to me. And this is what you should avoid. They will find their way in the live streams. But I'm going to try to do my best to keep the focus on what price is doing right now. So there's going to be times, hopefully, most of the live stream will be quiet. And I'll only be talking about things that are important. So that way it kind of trains your subconscious also to not feel like you got to be busy all the time. Because we're watching price, we're observing price. I'm going to be highlighting specific characteristics that I think are noteworthy for you. They may or may not be catalysts for price runs. 
And that's not the that's not the point, really, because the worst thing you can do is go in. And this is what I mentioned the other day. And pretty much every time I've ever called the market and moves in my favor. I really don't want you sending me tweets saying thank you and showing me that you made money. I, I, I don't want that. That That's pressure on me because I'm concerned that some of you are not going to listen and you're going to try to trade instead of trying to learn how to do this on your own. And eventually I'm going to get it wrong. And then you're going to be upset and I'm going to be upset because you didn't listen. So take advantage of the opportunity. I'm not going anywhere folks. Okay. That we have a whole year in front of us. Just relax. All these things repeat. And I'm teaching you how to navigate, get through this jungle. Sometimes you're going to step in quicksand. I'll be there to pull your attention away from what you're trying to get yourself into if you would have pushed a button, but you're not going to, right? <laughs> you're not, you're not listening, I know. But you'll learn the lesson. Invariably, I'm going to get something wrong and you're like, oh, let me just go back to what he said and not push the button. And focus on learning. But you'll see that there are times when the markets are really easy. They're real easy. Like books you've read before, you just know it. You know the plot, you know the dialogue, you know what the characters are going to say with one another, you know everything. And if you really love the story, the writer, the book, and I have several books like that, more or less Stephen King books. And I can read them multiple times and I just, I love them. Like the green mile, you know, that, that, uh, that movie, the book is way better, but they did a wonderful job with it. And you're probably thinking, Oh, here we go. But price is just like that. When you are looking for things that you are familiar with, my students, my long-term students and anyone that's ever been really paying any attention to my content, really taking notes and listening to when it is I tell folks not to try to engage price action. It's the days leading up to non-farm payroll. Now, clearly today I was giving you one more rebuttal to the people that say, I don't know how to trade or these concepts don't work. And if he knew how to trade or if there was an algorithm, it doesn't take the day off on the days before non-farm payroll. You're right. It doesn't. It doesn't. But it presents more of a cloud in the clarity in price delivery. Meaning, if you watch the recording I posted this morning on Twitter, <clears throat> excuse me, I mentioned that I wanted to see those two areas remain unfilled. Both of them filled in. Immediately, my response was, I, it needs to, in the next three minutes, in the next three one-minute candles, it must deliver the price I'm looking for. Remember, I was talking about, I don't know how far back it was, but there's a time filter I start applying. When I see the market showing me signatures that I may be near an intermediate term high or low, and it may be retracing deeper against me, I have to prepare for that. So I don't like to be part of a intermediate term retracement unless I'm in a short term trade or one shot, one kill, you know, something that I'm going to hold for a few days. Then I'm not so concerned about that. And my stop loss is so far away from where market price is. It's not a factor for me. But if I'm day trading, I have to have a time filter. And I'm waiting to see, does the market still show me a willingness? Because three PD arrays being broken, I'm in trouble. That means I'm probably going to get stopped out. It may enter consolidation or I'm in an intermediate term retracement. And that's respective to whether I'm bullish or bearish. If I see three things that would normally support price while I'm watching price go higher, when you see me doing all the annotations and I'm drawing out order blocks and fair value gaps and saying, you know, this is where it should do this and shouldn't do that. If I'm long and I see three of those broke to the downside, that right there is a warning sign for me. It's a warning. So I saw those things occurring in my trade this morning, as I was building it up and then waiting for it to pan out and go up to my objectives, there was two instances where I wanted to see those two gaps remain open. And they didn't, they closed. And they went back down to an order block, but that order block would have been it. Like once it hit that, it needs to, it needs to show me. That's why I was like, okay, it must deliver. It absolutely has to deliver now, because if it doesn't, 
then I have to get aggressive about taking a lot of the trade off that's on or potentially collapse the trade. Not necessarily roll my stop up. Rolling the stop up is something you want to do once you book profits. Once you take a partial, then you want to start moving your stop. But you want to do so gradually. I'm not in a hurry. I'm, my mindset is not, let me hurry up and protect everything I have in the trade. My mindset is, is price still showing me a willingness to follow the narrative I have subscribed to? Because if the markets are in fact algorithmic, then these things should remain true. Now, the human in me, the person that's going to be fallible, because I'm not infallible, I will invariably do something and make a decision that was poorly executed on. I own those, I own those errors. They're mine. It's not that the algorithm did something false or it's been changed or you know, something to that effect. It just means that I made the error. I did. So it removes all the argument and it's because I'm human and you're human too. You're going to miss a move. You're going to mess up. You're going to get stopped out. You're going to not buy enough, not sell enough. They're always going to be in there as part of the, the end result of your, your development and your career as a trader. You're going to have high points where you're like, I was really doing well at this time. And you're going to have these low points where you just feel like you can't find any traction. That's a normal thing. That is a normal thing. I was listening to uh, Tom Hugard, and he mentioned that uh, he had obviously shown publicly to his followers that uh, you know when he's not trading on his high note, you know, he he admits that you know it it can look dismal, and that may sound like wait a minute, you know, this guy's supposed to be the high stakes trader. You know, he's the guy that's making a lot of money. He very well may be doing that, but it doesn't mean that he and anyone else, and myself included, aren't exempt from having periods of drawdown where it just you're just in a funk, like you feel like you're just not you're just not there, and the market may be doing amazing delivery and price. It may be presenting opportunities left and right, but you just can't align yourself with it. And that's, I mean, I may sound very lucid right now, but I'm droopy eyed. I'm tired. I'm, my entire body is fatigued. And if you look at my tweets today, I was mistyping things and I mis, mis uh, quoted. Uh, I wanted to type 4,200 and I put 4,100 and I think I spooked the market because it started dropping. <laughs> That was one of the other things I want to see this year when I start doing live streaming. Because when I was on uh, Merck Internet Relay Chat, um, when I was posting what I believed the S&P was going to do, uh, we would see little spikes as soon as I made that post in the chat room. And to me, I thought it was neat. Like I wanted to see how much of an influence. But uh, most of you, okay, shouldn't be worrying about those types of things. You should be focused on the things I'm, I'm teaching and does the price action support the things I've taught and what I'm focusing on in, in that very session. But there's going to be periods where you just can't find your footing. You can't find your groove. And the best thing you can do as a developing student is as soon as you figure that out is the case right then and there. Remove risk. Even if you're in a trade, just remove it. Close it. But Michael, what happens if I would have held on to the trade? Who cares? Because again, we're going back to that same problem. You're assuming your entire career is encapsulated in that one trade. That's not disciplined. That's not disciplined approach to yourself, reasonable expectations. And you're focusing on money, the right transaction where you're correct versus are you doing the right things to preserve equity? and emotional psychological equity where you're not stressing yourself out unnecessarily. And you can do that being in a trade while fatigued and, or you feel, you just feel off. Like you just, you don't have the confidence. And that's not the same thing as new developing traders forging patients because that's normal. You're going to feel that. But if you found your model, and you're pretty much consistent on finding setups. You'll have a little bit of drawdown. You don't freak out. You come back from it. You're not in a rush to get it back, and you still find consistency. I'm talking to that crowd right now when I'm saying this. If you ever get to that point 
where you get into the market and you have a position on and you just don't feel connected, you will not be able to respond as you should when the warning signs are flashing. You'll be like a deer in headlights and it'll just roll right over top of you. And after you're out, you'll have complete 2020 pers perspective and you'll think, oh, I wish I would have, but it's too late then. Versus you get out, it does move in your favor. It's okay because you removed yourself from that potential because you don't know the outcome. That's the problem when you have something move after the fact. When something happens after it's done, the hyenas will come and laugh and cackle and they'll think they have something. And when the lion stands up and rips their ass apart publicly and sends them packing, they're not around laughing anymore. So you have to control how much the hyenas can have access to. And in the market, they'll take your ass off completely if you're not in control of yourself, if you don't manage the risk. And the only way you can do that is be disciplined. There's nothing wrong. There's no weakness. It doesn't mean you're not a good trader. If you feel and you acknowledge that you're not, you're not dialed in, that means you're not focused. You can't focus. You have things tugging at you. Your attention's elsewhere. You don't feel well. You're just fatigued. You're tired. You just don't feel like you're hitting on all the cylinders that you would normally expect yourself to be doing when you're trading. They're all invitations, as far as I'm concerned, for you to say, you know what? I'm just going to disconnect. I'm going to come back either today or in a few days. I'll take a week off, recuperate, rest. The markets repeat over and over and over again. I've been going daily with you all on Twitter to some degree or another, and it's pretty consistent. Where I'm pointing, the market generally goes there. Some of you would look at that and say, well, that's, that's not good enough. You know, I want to be told when to get in and get out. Well, you need to go somewhere else because I'm not promising you that. I'm promising you I'm going to teach you how to reprice, but you have to submit to a lot of things. And it's not having your weight mentorship here. I'm not running Burger King. So if you want to have your way of doing it, then go buy a whole bunch of books, a whole, whole bunch of courses, subscribe to everybody on YouTube that runs a course and sells things, and then cherry pick what you think works through trial and error. And then see who does better. Because if you're with somebody that has spent enough time to know what it's likely to do, lost lots of money, learned the lessons from that, how to teach other people how to do it, you want to be under the wing of someone like that. Because they generally will help steer you away from the problem areas that they themselves encounter. It doesn't mean they're going to completely make your development free of all kinds of dangers and perils because you're, you're going to bring that to the table in your own personality. There's character flaws that all of us have. But I think that uh, I'm, I'm not stopping. So let me preface it by saying this, but if I were to stop right now, what I've already demonstrated so far last year and this, this past month and today, and yesterday, is enough to communicate that there's something more going on except for buying and selling pressure. And I want to talk a little bit about this because I mentioned it in tweets last night and I ruffled some feathers from folks that are in the industry and they want to come at me with their alma mater. <laughs> but I'm from, I understand where you're from, okay? But you don't know where I'm from and where I came from and what I know is a little bit above what you're used to seeing. And I, that's not arrogance, okay? So just permit me for a few moments to talk and understand that what I'm saying is nothing egotistical. It's nothing remotely close to trying to be prideful, it's not. But I gave an analogy that you know, if, if you were a, a card player, okay? And you went around, you, you were playing cards. I'm not saying you go to a casino, Okay, but if you went around to where they have private games, if you are a card mechanic, it means you were a card cheat. Okay, uh, you know how to run up a card hand, run a deck, uh, deal seconds, deal bottoms, deal fifths, third seconds. Those are characteristics of someone that is highly proficient in card handling. 
Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what does this got to do with anything? Just listen. If you had that skill set and you sat down with a lay audience of card players and maybe they've been playing for a long time, but they just never seen sleight of hand before. They've never seen a mechanic script. They've never seen dealing seconds, bottoms, never seen anything like that. And a mechanic that's proficient in doing that and running up a deck. I'm going to show you, okay? I'm going to give you a visual representation of what I mean by this. I'm going to take a brand new deck of cards. I'm going to peel the plastic off of it. I'm going to show it to you. It's all real, not some gimmicked cards. And I'm going to run up a hand with shuffling right in front of you. And I'm going to deal it out. It's going to look just like everything's on the up and up. Everything's fair. You watch the cards go interwove one another. It's shuffled, legitimately shuffled. But I will know every card in its proper order from top down. For those of you who are familiar, look up or Google how to riffle stack a Psy Stebbins order from a new deck. That'll be homework for y'all. It's kind of hard to find, but that's what it is. That's the procedure. That's what, you, that's what a magician does with a brand new deck. Just because you hand the cards to someone else at the card table and you watch them shuffle, that is not fair. Because I know how to run up a hand. I know how to cop cards. I know how to switch cards all while we're playing. And if I was less of a person, I could make a lot of money doing that. Lots of money doing that. I know how to count cards as well. Irrelevant, I know. It's not pride. I'm just telling you, these are the things I pursued when I was a little kid into teenage years. Those are the things I, I want to be good at. It. To me, I think performing magic was amazing. And I know for some of you watching me do these things, it feels like a magic trick. There's got to be some kind of gimmick that I'm doing, but now I'm doing it live. And I'm calling it and explaining it to you beforehand why it should do certain things at these specific levels. On these very candles, watch this candle. It's going to act as support, act as resistance. I'm taking you behind the scenes and showing you what slight what gimmick the algorithm is going to be using at that moment. Now back to the analogy and the relationships I'm trying to draw here. Because it's my position, it's not necessarily important for you to believe it, but I feel because I'm obsessively compulsive about things, I feel I have to at least make the argument as much as I can, and this will be the last time we'll talk about it. Admittedly, that probably sounds like it's not going to be true, but it will be the last time I'm going to talk like this. We all watch price deliver through our trading platforms, our broker feeds, you know, CNBC, the ticker tape, everything, all that price fluctuation. Think of that as cards, individual cards. Every time there's a new tick, every new market price printing, that's a new card in a deck. How many cards are there? Well, let's just say for the sake of a whole 24 hour day, there's 52 cards. Now, every one of those transactions, obviously, would amount way beyond 52, right? But we're just going to draw a very vague analogy, but it'll make sense in the end. I have folks that have been floor traders from the CBOT and the CME. I have had people that came from hedge funds. I have had folks that claim to be bank traders, okay? Um, I've had folks that literally would be the bee's knees on Twitter, but they're not market makers. As much as that title is associated with them, they may be called a market maker. I made the market for oil. I made the market for copper. I made the market for options on this stock. Uh, you dealt in price. You didn't make price. You're dealing in the price feed that's coming, okay? You're not establishing and ordering where price is going. Ultimately, you have no say-so in that. You might 
find and provide liquidity, that's fine. That's not making a market. I mean, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. And now all of you, because you're all indoctrinated, <laughs> you're used to seeing all this misinformation. You only know as much as the books and the people that train you when you go to work at these financial institutions know. That's it. That's all you know. But when those types of individuals come into this fold and they see what I'm doing, how I'm calling it, what I'm using, and the logic behind it, frankly, they're like, what the fuck is going on here? And it rattles them. And the first thing that they reach for is, okay, I got to immediately challenge this guy because this is completely upsetting my entire understanding. I got to question my entire reality. What I've been doing for work for this company what I've been doing as an employee of this firm, what I've been doing for this brokerage firm, what I've been doing for this bank. Now, I, I feel like i got to question my own reality because this shouldn't be possible. Is there really an algorithm or is this guy full of shit? Yes, it's always the same way. And some are very belligerent and say, like, oh, dude, you're full of shit. Okay. I'm still going to do what I'm doing. And you don't know what I'm doing. But I'm going to keep doing it. And the others very politely will say, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And I appreciate what you're saying. And uh, maybe you found some some patterns. But your logic is the why price is what it's doing is is wrong. I don't believe I am. I don't believe I am. In fact, I know I'm not. <laughs> so if we were to go back to the analogy for cards, OK. We're all watching price. It's just meandering around, going around, banging around between specific levels, and it looks all random. And these professionals and retail traders alike will look at the charts and attribute a bias, a sentiment, an opinion, if you will, and attribute a measure of monetary risk associated to a pattern or the output of an indicator, which only does one thing. It number crunches what the price is already done not that it's guaranteed to do something as a result after that it's looking at something crunching the numbers chewing it up and spitting it out and there you're trying to read it much like individuals that take chicken bones and they shake them in their hand throw them down and they try to tell the future from that or read palms it's all bullshit that's nonsense the market has no affinity for algorithmic animal patterns it has no affinity for elliott wave it doesn't even know what elliott wave is it's not keeping count of the waves okay it's not doing all that shit it has nothing to do with wyckoff nothing supply and demand is an illusion in commodities it's a real factor that's a real market it's real it's a it's the world's grocery store there's a real supply and demand for corn there's a real supply and demand for wheat, for gold. But there really is no supply and demand for S&P. So it has to be, what, engineered. And it's all manipulation. It's gyrating and moving around, just like the currencies, which has no real supply and demand factor associated either. So when you put down your alma mater for a few moments and just take a step back and think about it, we're all watching price go through the ticker tape all day long. That's equivalent to the cards shuffling at a table we're all sitting at trying to play our hand. But amongst all of us, there's a mechanic. That hand that you don't see that's running the cards the way they want those cards to run. They're calling the pace. They're calling the shots. They know how to make your hand look good enough for you to play it, and you'll plunk your money down, and then they're going to run you. They'll ante up. You'll ante up because you feel like you got a strong hand. You got kings and aces. That's a great hand. Well, it's really not that great a hand when you have a royal flush and spades. It kind of defeats the whole purpose of feeling like you're invincible when you have someone that's other, on the other side of the table who ran the cards, they'll dealt them out to everybody. 
And I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to videotape myself doing it. You can see it happening. And no, I'm not going to be doing weekend tricks on the YouTube channel. But I just want to give you a visual representation because it feels, while you're there, like everything's on the up and up. It's normal. It's, 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 it's just trustworthy. It's a brand new deck. You could bring the deck to me, sealed up, and I'll still do it. You need two perfect Pharaoh shuffles. A football team's name and a basketball team's name. And anybody that figures out how to find, how to run a size Stebbins order and a deck of cards, a new deck order, you'll know exactly what I mean what I just said there. That's how you do it. But a new deck ran up like that becomes size Stebbins. It means all I need to know is the bottom card and the top card. What does that mean? I need to know where is the buy side and the sell side. Then I just know the rest of the order. I know the PDRA matrix at that moment. I know what is likely to be used in price, but the price may print something. It may not give me a breaker. It may just give me a fair value gap. It may just give me an order block. It may just give me a propulsion candle. But there's so many things I see. How do you know? Because it's only going to present one or two things. That's it. That's the benefit of learning everything I'm teaching you. Because if you're going to be a one-trick pony, you can make money. Yes, you can just do breakers. Yes, you can do the model I taught last year on YouTube. They work. It works. I'm not limited to that. Neither should you be. Once you learn how to do last year's model, which is this year's model, <laughs> that model is wonderful. But hopefully it'll provide you the calmness, not to rush to learn to do everything right away. Just let it happen. I didn't learn all this stuff in one week. I didn't learn it in one year. It took a lot of time. And you're going to find that you're going to wrestle with yourself. And some of you probably go into this and you probably watch some of my videos in the past and said, I'm going to master the breaker. I'm going to master the fair value gap now. I'm going to master institutional order flow entry drill. And you're finding difficulty with it. And you're second guessing yourself. Well, maybe it doesn't work as well as I thought it did. No, you're just trying to push too fast, too hard. And maybe that PDA array is probably not your forte. Maybe there's another one that's easier. Visually, I think that breakers and fair value gaps are the easiest one to see. But when we're watching price, it's moving around, gyrating around. That's equivalent to every trader sitting at the table watching the deck get shuffled. Looks fair, right? Everybody's watching the same price. We're all watching ICT talk about the real-time data in ES. Those candles are moving around. The market's being shuffled. And then finally, I'm counting cards. Not candles. I'm not counting candles. I'm counting cards. And I'm going to see when that hand is perfect for me to bet against because I'm running the deck up. Who's running price? I'm running price. I'm waiting for a specific thing to occur. And then I'll ante up. I'll pyramid. Add more to the pot. Add more to the pot. Letting retail traders feel like they got a chance. I annotate it in my charts. Retail's wanting the shelf short. Retail has their stops here. I'm anteing up. I'm wanting that wrestling match between retail logic traders and their harmonic patterns to wrestle me, which is the market. And the market wins. The hyenas laugh for a moment. They get a little nip. But eventually the lion stands up and tears their ass up. And you have 4193 delivered. You have 4180 delivered. 4176 and a quarter delivered, all under the basis of accumulation in the SMT divergence between the NASDAQ lows and the ES lows. That was the stage I was setting you up for the idea that this is all under accumulation. It's sloppy in price delivery. Yes. Yes. That was the whole point. It's ugly. You have to know what it looks like. Wrestle through that while you're learning. And then if you're wise, you'll say, I'm not going to trade today. Wait a minute, ICT. If you wouldn't have traded today, you couldn't have caught those moves. You're right. And guess what? I don't give a shit. Because these types of moves happen all the time. That's the problem. 
when you are not versed in what's actually going on and how often this repeats, I mean, I've spent every day with you. Am I deleting tweets? Am I calling things that are outside the, the, the delivery of your own chart? How many times do I have to say and show and prove before I can really get you to understand that this is not random? It's not random. I just can't speak as freely as I want to. I want to say all kinds of things, but I can't. So I have to talk like this, which many times frustrates some of you and you get angry. Like I'm doing it to be funny or I'm toying with you. I'm not. I wish I could just talk openly. I can't though. I have to stay within the language I've created. That's the only thing that keeps me safe. 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 So when you think, but I worked at this firm. We were told that this is what happens. And we see the, we see the order flow coming in. <laughs> You're watching cards being shuffled. You're sitting at the table. You're just right next to the dealer shuffling the cards. And you're going to call yourself the market maker. You're neither. You're not a dealer. You're not a market maker. You're a participant. You're a player at the card table. Price is coming and going whether you deal in it, trade in it or not. It's equivalent to when you miss a move. You may have seen, oh, 4180 is going to happen. 4193, I saw that coming, ICT. Before you even mentioned it earlier this morning, I, I knew it was coming. That's great. It's wonderful. If you don't take a trade on it, what's it feel like afterwards? Well, you know, I, I mean, I saw it coming, but you didn't do anything with it. That price was going there regardless. It was going there regardless of whether ICT mentioned it or not. If ICT would have slept in today, and admittedly, I wish it would have. <laughs> I'm tired. It would have delivered that. I explained to you where it was going to go, why it will go there, because that's where the orders were. Buy side was resting above that 4192 relative to the daily chart. Why should it have gone there? Because that's where large funds are. That's where the liquidity is. The algorithm is coded to go to those intermediate term highs like that on a daily chart. And that way it allows the market to absorb and utilize that liquidity that will be invariably resting above that. It has nothing to do with buying and selling pressure. It has nothing to do with it. Zero, zilch, nada. It is not a factor. You ever play? My son, my youngest son, he had this game on his phone. And admittedly, I was addicted to playing it once he showed it to me. I just don't remember what the hell the name of it was. It was like this little worm thing or snake or something like that. And it would you, you steered around and you eat all these dots, but you can't touch another snake or you can't touch the edge of the, the area you're playing in or you, you have to start all over. And the more dots you eat, the longer your snake becomes. So in a lot of ways, and I tried to communicate it to my son when he was playing, I said, price is just like that snake game where it just goes around constantly eating liquidity in bigger moves and like look at the look at the chart today from 9 30 to now on a one minute chart that's a snake okay that that's grown every new candle has consumed liquidity it's moved to an inefficiency and it moved into liquidity that's all price is doing that's all it's doing it's predetermined it's going to be doing whatever it's designed to do from midnight in new york local time it's established that's the way it works. And I don't give a fuck who doesn't believe it. I don't care. But I'm not going to arm wrestle any of you past this day today. I'm not. I don't care. You either see it or you don't. You don't want to subscribe to the view that it's algorithmically driven and you just want to trust the things I'm teaching you. Great. You, you'll do no harm to yourself by doing that. But I'm tired of these fucking clowns. Okay. These idiots on fucking social media making videos pretending they have a fucking clue. They have no idea what they're talking about. Zero. Zero. And to the professionals that are amongst you, I appreciate the respect and candor that you've shown me, even though you may disagree with it. 
But I promise you, what you think you know, that's not it. That is not it. But what happens when the market does all these crazy gyrations? That's manual intervention. That's when the gears get turned a little bit. And you'll fall victim to that. Like I fall victim to that. I may be in a trade. I may be about to take a trade. I may look to get into a trade. It may take me out, put me in, or remove me adversely. Whose fault is it? Mine. Am I going to say, oh, the algorithm's changed. They're going to beat me up for now. No. That just means I made a mistake as a trader. I got burned that time, and my money management does the work of preserving me so I don't end my career on one trade transaction. Like most of you new people are trying to do that. You're, ho you're holding your entire success and failure on the basis of the result of the very trade you're in or about to take. And then when it doesn't go to your way, no wonder you go mentally you know, insane, crazy, flipping out. Oh, I can't figure this out. Versus it's one transaction among millions of who, who knows how many trades you're going to take in your whole lifetime. And not all of them are going to be profitable. Not all of them are going to go to your target. I wasn't able to be in on that first run all the way up to 4180. I got stopped out. Did it change my mind about it? No. I, you watched me wrestle it today in front of all of you in a day that I wouldn't be trading anyway because I know it's shitty. It's choppy. It does a lot of things that won't make a lot of sense at the time. And I've learned over years, decades, to not demand a whole lot of precision on this day. Now, you might look at this and say, man, that was precise as shit. It's not to me. This is a really cloudy, shitty day. It doesn't matter. I know what the algorithm is likely to do on the larger scale of it. And I'll have to endure that. And I use the short-term trader's mindset to navigate through all that chop. The fair value gaps that I was outlining, they did not hold up. And if that would have been used as a scalp intraday, you would have been stopped at 4158. It doesn't change the narrative that it was going where? 4180. 4193. Let that sink in for a minute. One transaction, one expectation in price, not panning out, does not completely cause the market to want to reverse. All right, we didn't get that trade. It was a reversal. We got to go the other direction now. No. And for many of you that watch me, if it goes to a target, that's not an invitation to go the opposite direction. <laughs> like I'm not trying to constantly be in the marketplace and I'm not trying to teach my students to worry about reading price action like that. Can I sit in front of a chart like the ES or bonds and trade up and down all day long and be profitable? Yes, I can. But it takes a lot out of me. It's a lot of focus. And for what? what the fuck do I need to do that for? What would anybody want to need to do that for? Yes, you can do a lot of transactions and, and run up a bill in commissions. Who, you know, who wants to do that? You want your commission costs and fees to be manageable. Especially if you're a trader, you know you're going to be pyramiding. Your transaction costs go through the roof. Haven't factored in that. Any of that cost, have you? Yeah. It eats into it. So you have to be really sure that you know what you're doing. Not just... I'm a pyramiding trader now because I learned from ICT. That's not a badge of honor. That's an incurred increased cost. And you better be more profitable than the average person because more transactions is more fees and commissions. And they can eat into your bottom line if you don't know what you're doing. So when I'm talking to you and I'm showing you these things, I want you to think about that analogy I used. When you're watching price and it's coming down the wire and we're watching every new fluctuation, it feels like it's a free market. It feels like it's completely random and we all have the equal playing field of being right or wrong. And it's a 50-50 net sum zero game. It is not anything like that at all. It's scripted just like wrestling is. The outcome's already predetermined. If it was patterns, okay, if it was patterns or indicators or something you can find in a book or someone that's teaching something out there anywhere, 
If it was anything like that that I'm implementing, it would have been already identified and then other people would be doing exactly what I'm doing and they're not. I'm telling you where it's going before it goes. I'm one-sided. And I'm using the logic that I know, I don't guess, I'm, I'm not making assumptions. It's not a conjecture. I know this market's book on an algorithm. Sometimes they do a little squirrely thing here and there. It might mess up your focus, might get you out of your trade, and that's fine. Go back to square one. Is the trade still viable? If it is, just trade like it's your first entry with less risk. But if it's a if it's a wrestling match for you to to learn under me, I don't want to have any bound any barriers for any of you to learn this year. So this is the last conversation we're going to have about algorithmic anything. It's just going to be these are my concepts. My students understand what they are rooted in, what they're founded in, how I codified them. But you need not go around poking other YouTubers other traders and try to ridicule and minimize whatever they're doing because they may very well be profitable. And just because you're learning something that I believe, and you'll soon at the end of this year discover too, it is the highest on the food chain. You're at the closest that any other methodology would be to the market itself. And that's saying a lot, I know. And still, it ain't it ain't pride. It's not ego. It's just the fucking facts. And when you warm up to the idea that these concepts, we'll call it from that perspective going forward, they give you an edge that is only going to be as good as the trader that implements them. If you come into it groggy, sick, mad, bent, drunk, high, you're not going to be you're not going to be doing it like you're supposed to be doing it. Your perspective is going to be skewed. And that's not equating to really using it like I'm teaching it. So I wanted to talk in a way where I could hopefully disarm you. Because some of you listen to me and you're always looking for something to attack. Instead of just saying, let's test what he's saying. That's what I'm asking you to do. I mean, if I didn't understand what was likely to happen, how can I be right this many times? As precise. I mean, think. When you sit down in these markets and you try to use logic that would be opposed to what I'm teaching, your trades aren't going to pan out. And that's just the bottom line. And they're going to feel like, what am I doing wrong? What do I got to tinker with? What do I have to adjust? And that's all the same shit that I did when I was a young man. When I was 20, I was trying to figure out and decipher what the actual coding for each in the code indicator, like, you know, what should my variables be for all of my indicators? What settings? I'm going to fine tune it. And that was the big thing back then. Everybody wanted to know what you're saying. You all asked me to show you my colors and my charts. What difference does it make what colors I got? When I see that, I think that somebody that wants to make their charts look like mine. So that way, when they take my videos and I forget to put a watermark on it, they can say, oh, yeah, it was my, it was my trade. You can do what I'm doing. It's going to take you time. You don't need to fake it. I just want, I want to be understood this year and I don't want any distractions from your learning because if you waste this opportunity, like I'm not, I'm not springboarding into 2024 doing this again. Like I'm already tired. Like I'm tired already and we've only done one month. So it takes a lot to focus And keep my wits while I'm doing it. And also still have to type all this stuff up. <laughs> and it's happening on a one-minute chart. So I'm trying to be as close as I possibly can. 
because there's people out there will say that I'm using delayed data and I made the mistake. I wish I wouldn't have paid, I wish I would not have posted this tweet now. I said um, yesterday, I said, all done with the aid of delayed data. And some people said, oh, no wonder. Well, that makes sense. It's it, like, like I'm using really delayed data. <laughs> oh, man. It was delayed only in the sense that the time it takes for me to talk about it live in the live stream and finally making it to your computer or phone. Whatever that delay is, I can't I can't change it. I can't fix it. So I'm always <laughs> I'm always gonna have people that are gonna doubt it and to, you know be detractors, and that's fine. You're gonna have the same thing. So just bear that in mind if you were trying to learn how to do this and you want to be a social media influencer. It's not easy, especially if your heart's in it. Because I wear my heart on my sleeve and I want all of my students to do well. And when you see me address things that people that don't like me communicate and talk about. I'm concerned about the one person that listens to them and doesn't take the initiative to look into it themselves and see, is there anything to this? They just take somebody else's opinion. They allow social media to mold and shape their opinion, which is the worst thing you can possibly do. I'm weighing myself in the balances in front of all of you. You're, you're able to see what I'm doing. Every day, I'm right or I'm wrong. The logic is there or it's not. And I've converted a lot of folks that were against me years ago. They don't like to admit it publicly, and I don't rub their nose in it. But I want everyone to do well. Like, that's what I, I want that. I don't care who's making money as a competitor to me. I, I, mean, I don't give a fuck. There's no competition. There's no competition. You make money, everybody else makes money, who cares? But this, this faction against faction, this tribe against tribe, this team against other team, I don't, there's no ICT team. It's just you. You are an army of one. When you sit in front of your charts and you learn how to do this, you don't need allies. You don't need to call in backup. You're going to do whatever you're going to do, and you're a force to be reckoned with. And your bottom line will be a resulting proof and testimony to that. It doesn't mean you won't have flesh wounds and paper cuts along the way, because you will. But they don't take you out of the game. The only thing that occurs that takes you out is you. Not controlling yourself, not controlling risk, not overtrading. And who's in control of that? You are. Your broker's not going to help you. Your partner that you all see other folks in the comments. Hey, I'm looking for a trade partner. Someone to learn uh, you know, as a partner with. No. Unless that person is your spouse or significant other, it doesn't work. A divided mind never sees it the same way. I'm telling you, that's just the fucking truth. You can't deny it. Once you try it and you'll drive yourself crazy doing it. You're asking to be in a laboratory experiment, two different individuals with two different personalities, two sets of character flaws. And we all have character flaws. And you're all going to decipher and interpret whatever I say in my lectures differently. Because you're cherry picking in the beginning. You want to get right to the buy me, sell me, stop here, target here. And you're all trying to listen to the things I'm saying. Like I'm talking secret code. Oh, he's, he's giving an enigma message. He's talking in parables. He's really speaking to me and he's telling me to buy S&P right now. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking talking. That's all I'm doing. I'm talking and I'm teaching and everybody hears the same thing. But you're all turning me into this fucking science fiction shit. Like it's, it's tiresome. I'm just a man. That's all. I got stuff that I think you would enjoy having. And I'm just asking you to delve into it. But you can't be divided. You can't have someone else try to help you learn when they're learning. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Because you don't know if you have the equivalent of the lowest GPA student in the class as your partner. And you're going to listen to them. And be influenced by them and their GPA and performance and aptitude is, is in the low end. 
And you don't know that. And you don't want to waste time and discover that's what you've been dealing with. So price is absolutely like a deck of cards being shuffled. And when you understand how the mechanic, the composite man, the real market maker, when they're running up a hand, stacking a deck, building a market structure, and ready to deal the top or the bottom of the deck, buy side or sell side, you'll know how to play the hand that you have. Betting what you can afford to bet and ante up on. If you can't afford it, you can't ante up, then you just watch it, you study it. But we're not looking at price and when it moves like, oh shit, where did that come from? Oh, that was surprising. Look at that. Have you ever heard me remark like, wow, shit, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, you're going to have the same thing occur every time we do our live streams. It's boring. It's fucking boring. And I'll say this in, in closing, because I have a couple minutes left and you thought I was going to go over, didn't you? <laughs> Why isn't ICT a fucking billionaire? If he's the smartest person in the world, which I don't claim to be. I've never said that. Why isn't ICT a billionaire? Well, first of all, none of you know my net worth, and I don't make it my business to tell anybody my net worth. And it's irrelevant anyway. But... If a card counter is discovered in a casino, does the casino invite them to sit at their table? No. As much as you believe that these markets are free, they're not. They're controlled, and they should be. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not vilifying any of it. But you shouldn't be afraid of it. You should be thankful it's rigged. It's good. It's a good thing that it's rigged. Because if it was really free, the folks on Reddit would have crashed it a long time ago. But you've seen how silly that was, wasn't it? I have handlers. I'm allowed to do certain things and a longer list that I can't. So you see me doing what I do Demo, no problem. I got no problem. I got no problem teaching you on a demo account. I got no problem teaching the way I teach. I see no limitation in that. And I allow the ill-equipped, mentally deficient individuals that want to just say, if he was doing this and doing that, I let them have those arguments. And I toy with them out here on Twitter. And I snidely remark in passing in my videos. And that's my way of letting them know, I don't give a fuck. You still can't come close to this. And anytime I want, I can make millions of dollars. Anytime I fucking want. I am doing this because I love doing this. And it's partially a vendetta. <laughs> And that's as far as I'll mention in that regard. But if someone says, I can't walk on the fucking grass, I'm going to moonwalk all over that motherfucker. And while I may not be allowed to play at the table, I'm bringing a whole lot of motherfuckers all around the world to play. And with that, enjoy your weekend. Until next time, be safe.